Hey guys, Dr. Brown here with Kubo Math coming to you from Tarlock City, Philippines. And tonight we're looking at Calculus 1 Implicit Differentiation. Whoa, so let's get after it. Okay, you know when we did derivatives, if we said let's take the derivative of x cubed, you'd say, hey, no problem. So we would bring the, x, the 3 down times x to the 3 minus 1, and that would give us 3x squared. No problem. What if we said, hey, let's take the derivative with respect to x of y cubed. <laughs> what do we do? Okay, this is why we've waited to talk about implicit differentiation until we got the chain rule out there. So if you haven't seen the video on the chain rule and the general power rule, you need to go back to that. But in general, the chain rule is stating if I have a function in this, these parentheses and I'm performing another function on that, so let's say I've started with this function, something in there, some function of x, and I perform another function on that one, and now I want to take the derivative with respect to x. It's the derivative with respect to x of the outside function times the derivative with respect to x of the inside function. Usually we talk about this being g of x and this is f of g of x. Okay, so we have that situation here. We're trying to take the derivative of y cubed with respect to x. I don't see an x. So we can work the chain rule on that to end up with dy dx. So you end up with dy, derivative of y with respect to x. So let's try that. We're going to work the chain rule on y cubed. So that would equal 3y to the 3 minus 1, which is squared, dy dx. So it's almost like here's y in that parentheses, and we were cubing it. So now we would do the uh, perform the general power rule, bring the 3 down, 3 times this to the 3 minus 1, which was that squared. So now we've taken that derivative. Now the derivative of what's on the inside, which was dy dx. Clear as mud. First time I saw that, yes, my hair caught on fire. <laughs> okay. The best way for me was to work a problem or two and compare the old way we've, we've worked. Because some problems you can work explicitly, like we've done in the past, or implicitly, like I was just showing you. So let's take this problem x to the second power plus y to the second power equals 64. Okay, let's solve this for y just like we've always done. And, and actually we want to find dy dx. And in the past we would have y equals something. And then we would take dy dx or sometimes we called that y prime but I'm looking for dy dx, or y prime. So, let's change this into y equals something. So I can subtract x squared from both sides. So that's 64 minus x squared. That cancels it here. Now I can take the square root of y. So y equals 64 minus x to the second power to the one half. So I've taken the square root of all of this. 
Now then, dy dx, we've done this in the past. Oh, chain of the general power rule. We'll say one half, bring that one half down, 64 minus x to the second power times one half minus one, which is minus one half times, now the chain rule, the derivative of what's on the inside, which would be bring the two down, minus two x. That would be the derivative. Now then, we have a minus two x times one half, which would give me minus x times this, which is to the negative one half. I'm gonna bring that down to get rid of that negative. So it's 64 minus x to the second power to the positive one half since I've moved it down. Oh, but look, 64 minus x squared to all to the one half, that's y. Oh, I can just substitute in that. So that's minus x over y. So dy dx equals minus x over y. This was performed explicitly as we learned in the past. But now what about performing that same function Im through implicit differentiation? So I have the same function x squared plus y squared equals 64. I'm going to take the derivative of this with respect to x or, or d, dy dx. So so I'm taking 2x plus 2y dy dx equals 0. So it's derivative of 64 is 0. So now 2y dy dx equals, so I'll subtract 2x from each side. So dy over dx equals minus 2x divided by 2y equals minus x over y. Hmm, wow. Isn't that cool? We'll work problems, not tonight, but in future video, I have some excellent implicit differentiation problems that you cannot get the answer explicitly, only implicitly. So, all right, so that was a quick problem in implicit differentiation. Let's work another one like that. 16y squared minus x squared equals 16. Okay, let's take the derivative of that. So now 32y Bring the two down, two times 16, y to the two minus one, dy dx minus two x equals zero. So bring the two x over. So this is 32y dy dx equals two x. So subtract or divide 32y on both sides. So that cancels, so dy dx equals x over 16y. Now we can, that was implicit differentiation. Let's see if we can do that explicitly. Uh, yeah, we should be able to in this one. So 16y squared minus x squared equals 16. So 16y squared equals 16 plus x squared. I added x squared to both sides. Now I'm going to divide 16 on both sides. So this cancels. y squared equals 16 plus x squared over 16. So y would equal this all to the one half. Okay. 
Now then, let's take the derivative of that. dy dx equals 1 half times 16 plus x squared to the minus 1 half times the derivative of what's on the inside. Oh, that's over 16. All right. Times the derivative of what's on the inside, which would be, this would be 16 over 16. The derivative of that is 0. X, the derivative of x squared over 16 equals 1 16th times the derivative of x squared. So 1 16th times 2x, which would be 2 over 16 to x. So it would be 1 over 8x. 1 over 8x. Okay. All right, so let's see what we've got here. So we've got these terms multiplied together gives me 1 16th times uh, x. I'm sorry, I almost lost my x there. So 1 16th x, x over 16. And I really need to move that down to the denominator, same as we did last time. So 16 plus x to the second power over 16. Since it was to the negative one half, I brought it down. Now it's to the positive. It's changed signs. So that is y. So now I have x over 16. All oh, that's y. Whoa, there we go. Same thing. So in this case, you could work it explicitly or implicitly, but you can see from an implicit perspective, it, was, it seemed to be simpler. Okay, let's work a few more just implicitly. All right, we have x, y squared, equals three. Uh, oh, product rule here. We're trying to take, we're trying to find dy dx. So let's take the derivative of this thing with respect to x. So I have the first one times the derivative of the second one, which is two y uh, to the first power dy dx equals zero. Okay. Uh, oh. <laughs> That was half of the product rule there. That was the first one times the derivative of the second one plus the second one times the derivative of the first one. Okay, and that and then the derivative of that is zero. Okay, now we go. All right, so let's collect some terms here. Let's subtract y square. And now I have 2xy dy dx equals negative y squared. So now I can divide both sides by 2xy. So dy dx equals, so one of those y's can cancel, so negative y over 2x. Okay. All right, what about uh, y cubed plus y squared minus 5y minus x squared equals negative 4? Whoa, we're trying to find dy dx. So let's take the derivatives on each individual term. So the derivative of y cubed, bring the 3 down, y to the 3 minus 1 dy dx, chain rule, plus bring the 2 down, 2y two to the 2 minus 1, which is y to the first, dy dx, chain rule again, minus 5y to the first, bring the 1 down, 1 times 5 is 5, y to the 0 is 1, dy dx, chain rule. Minus 2x equals 0. So x, the derivative of x squared is 2x. 
So I can add 2x to both sides. Takes care of that one. Now I can factor out. So dy dx times 3y squared plus 2y minus 5. And now I can divide both sides by 3y squared plus 2y minus 5. 3y squared plus 2y minus 5. And that would equal dy dx. Okay. So I got a sign. 2y plus plus 2y. Oh, we're good. Okay. All right. Let's see. x squared plus y squared equals 9. This is very similar to one we worked earlier. We're trying to find dy dx. So derivative of x squared is 2x plus derivative of y squared with respect to x is 2y dy dx. Derivative of 9 is 0. So we'll subtract 2x from each side. Oh, we did work one almost exactly like this. 2y dy dx. Divide both sides by 2y. So those cancel dy dx equals minus x over y. Okay, we worked one. Well, it came out the same. It was x squared plus y squared equals 64. We ended up with the same, same answer. Okay, one last one, and we'll call it a night. Okay. 2x cubed plus 3y cubed equals 64. Again, we're trying to find dy dx. So 3 times 2 is 6x to the 3 minus 1, which is 2, plus 3 times 3 is 9y to the 3 minus 1 is 2, dy dx. Derivative of 64 is 0. So 9y squared dy dx equals, we'll subtract 6x squared from both sides, divide by 9y squared on both sides. These cancel, at least me with dy dx equals um, minus 2 over 3 x squared, y squared. And if you're looking, thinking about that fraction reduction, you could say that's a negative 2 times 3 times x squared over 3 times 3 y squared. Those 3's cancel, leaves me negative 2 over 3 x squared, y squared. Okay. So that was a brief tutorial on implicit differentiation. Hopefully I didn't mess up any problems there, but you'll get the general concept where you're performing the chain rule. You're, you're taking a derivative of, of y as a function of x and ending up with the derivative of y with respect to x when there's no x that's visible to be seen. So that as we get to work in some problems, some of them are really cool. Like, like one problem will work. We have, let's say, an engine, and we have a crankshaft that's rotating and a connecting rod on there, and it's, and it's moving the piston in a linear direction as a function of this angle between the crankshaft throw and the connecting rod. And they're wanting you to determine the velocity of that piston or actually not the velocity, but the, dis the uh, uh, delta x, so the change in distance when the crank angle is at a certain angle. 
and you have to use implicit differentiation. There's no other way to work that problem. And it is an excellent problem. So I'm gathering up problems like that. Maybe we could work two or three in multiple videos, or the, uh, maybe we work them all, but the videos may be fairly long. Uh, given my spinal stenosis, I may not be able to stand up that long. So, but nevertheless, we can break it down into shorter videos 15, 20 minutes, and I can, I can stand through that. So, okay, enough of that. Uh, keep studying, work your math, and together let's build a better tomorrow, and let's do that through math. So that's all for tonight, and we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.